We're here to redeem the time. Welcome to Grade 7 Natural Science, Relationship of the Moon to the Earth, Tides, Part 2. If you're new here, be sure to click the subscribe button below and in the description below, you'll find links to other videos on this topic. You will need pen and paper for the activities that follow, so pause the video now, get your pen and paper, and when you're ready, continue. How do tides affect shoreline ecosystems? The intertidal zone is the area between the high tide mark and the low tide mark. The intertidal is this area. Inter means between. This is the intertidal zone. The intertidal zone is submerged in seawater during high tide. That means completely covered in seawater during high tide and exposed to air during low tide. That means uncovered and open. The intertidal zone includes sandy beaches, rocky shores, rocky cliffs, bays, and estuaries. An estuary is the wide part of a river at the place where it joins the sea. Here, fresh water mixes with salt water. The slightly salty water is called brackish water. An ecosystem is a community of living organisms and their interaction with the environment. The living organisms are plants and animals, and the non-living components of are sunlight, air, temperature, water, salt, and sand and soil. The intertidal zone is an extreme ecosystem. It constantly experiences extreme changes. It is a harsh environment to live in. Living organisms need to survive changes in moisture. Low tide is a time of dryness. Living organisms are exposed to air, sunlight, and face dehydration and desiccation, loss of moisture. Living organisms also need to survive underwater. Living organisms need to survive changes in temperature. Dry sand gets very hot. Air temperatures are extreme, very hot during the day to cold at night and freezing in winter. Water temperatures are moderate, less extreme. Living organisms need to survive changes in salinity. Salinity means the amount of salt in water. As water evaporates from tide pools, the remaining water becomes more salty. Salinity increases. When it rains, the water in rock pools becomes less salty. Salinity decreases. Living organisms need to survive changes in water movement and crashing waves. Water movement is highly turbulent. Living organisms are pummeled by strong waves and can be damaged by tumbling rocks and moving sediment, silt and sand. On sandy beaches, there is little to hold on to and living organisms can be swept away. Crabs survive and thrive. Crabs avoid crashing waves by moving quickly up the beach or by burrowing in the sand. Crabs spend most of the daytime in their burrows to stay cool and to avoid drying out. They follow the tide so their new burrows are always in damp sand. Crabs also hide under rocks to avoid heat and predators such as birds. Mussels and barnacles survive and thrive. A mussel, a barnacle. During low tide, they close their shells to conserve moisture and to avoid being eaten by birds. They live higher up the intertidal zone where marine predators, such as sea stars, can't reach them. They attach to rocks to avoid being swept away. Mussels avoid some sunlight by grouping tightly together and shading one another. By staying cooler, they don't dry out as fast. Seaweeds survive and thrive. 
They have root-like structures called holdfasts, which they use to grip onto the rocks so that they are not swept away. This seaweed is called dead man's fingers. Its finger-like branches are filled with mucus, thick slime, to prevent it from drying out during low tide. Mud skipper fish survive and thrive. They live on the mud flats of river estuaries and mangrove swamps. They can tolerate a wide range of salinity. When the tide goes out, they crawl quickly over the mud using their muscular pectoral fins like a pair of crutches. Before going on land, they enlarge their gill chambers and fill them with water. When this water runs out of oxygen, they replace it with new water. By staying wet, they can also absorb oxygen through their skin. The diversity of living organisms tends to increase moving down the intertidal zone. Lower down, there is less chance of drying out or being eaten by birds. Water temperatures are moderate and more food is available. However, there is more competition for space and high tides bring predatory fish. Pause the video and answer the questions. When you're done, continue. Pause the video and correct your work. When you're done, continue. Pause the video and answer the question. When you're done, continue. Pause the video and correct your work. When you're done, continue. Sources. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord show you his kindness. May he have mercy on you. May the Lord watch over you and give you peace.